In this video, we're talking about how to use a Riemann sum and left endpoints to find the area underneath a curve. And remember that a Riemann sum is just one technique that we can use to approximate area under a curve before we learn how to use an integral or an antiderivative to find exact value underneath the curve. So Riemann sum is going to let us approximate area, and the curve that we've been given in this particular problem is f of x is equal to 1 divided by x. We've been asked to find the area underneath this curve and above the x-axis over the interval x equals 1 to x equals 5. So on this interval right here, we're looking for area underneath this curve. And we've been told that n equals 4, and n is going to be the number of subintervals that you divide this interval into, or you can think of it as the number of rectangles you're going to use to approximate area underneath the curve. So whenever you're dealing with a Riemann sum problem, the first thing you're going to want to do is find delta x. And the formula that we always use to find delta x, think of delta x as the width of each one of our rectangles. The formula is going to be b minus a divided by n. We'll keep in mind here that the interval we've been given is the interval a to b. So we essentially have a comma b here. So that's where a and b come from. n is this n value we've been given here, the number of rectangles or the number of subintervals, n is equal to 4. So if we want to find delta x, we can just say b minus a, or in our case 5 minus 1, divided by n, which we know is 4. And then when we simplify, 5 minus 1 is 4, so we end up with 4 over 4, or just 1. So delta x is going to be equal to 1. That means that the width of each of our rectangles is going to be 1 unit. So before we get into the formula that we'll use for the Riemann sum, let's take a look at the curve f of x equals 1 divided by x to figure out what this delta x value really means. So here's what our curve looks like. This is the graph of f of x equals 1 divided by x, and we've just zoomed in here. We've got the origin, and you can see that we have the interval here, x equals 1 to x equals 5. So what we're interested in approximating is the area underneath this curve between these two green lines I just drew. So over this interval here, x equals 1 to x equals 5. Now remember, we're supposed to divide this interval into four rectangles. We use that information to say that delta x was equal to 1 or that the width of each rectangle was equal to 1. So our first rectangle is always going to start at the left edge of our interval, which here is x equals 1. If the width of every rectangle is 1, then the width of the first rectangle has to go from 1 to 2 and end right here, because the width here between 1 and 2 would be 1. So this interval from 1 to 2 is going to define the first rectangle. And then the second rectangle would be defined from 2 to 3, and then from 3 to 4, and then from 4 to 5. So the reason that we find delta x is so that we can start here at our left edge and count up by delta x so that we can find the right edge of the first rectangle and then the right edge of the next rectangle, and we keep counting up until we get to the end. And what you can see that that results in is four rectangles. So we have the first rectangle here, the second rectangle, the third rectangle, and the fourth rectangle, and we should always end up with the number n that we were given. So we have four rectangles or four subintervals. Now we've been asked to use left endpoints with this Riemann sum to approximate area, which means that the height of each rectangle, we already know the width of each rectangle is 1, but the height of each rectangle is going to be dictated by the point at which the left edge of each rectangle meets the curve. So this first rectangle, the width goes here from 1 to 2, so the left edge of that interval is 1. If we come up from that point until we meet the curve, we end up right here. So this point right here is going to be the value that dictates the height of this first rectangle. So if we wanted to draw the first rectangle, here's what it would look like. This would be the height, and we would come down and fill up the width of that rectangle. And so we would use this rectangle right here to approximate the area under the curve over this interval. So we're using this rectangle to approximate this area right here. And then if we want to draw the rectangle for the second interval here, interval number 2, we know that the width goes from 2 to 3, but the height is going to be determined by the left edge. So if we look at the left edge, which is at x equals 2, and we come up to the point where that meets the curve, that's this point right here. So what we can say then is that the rectangle is going to look like this. It's going to be that height and that width. And now this is the rectangle that we're going to use to approximate this area right here, the area underneath the curve. And so if we kept drawing our rectangles, what we'd have here is this rectangle at 3 to 4 
and then this rectangle from 4 to 5 over the interval 4 to 5. And so we would use these four rectangles to approximate the area underneath the curve. Now since we're using left endpoints and we're interested in the left endpoints, what we want to do is look at the left endpoints for each of these rectangles. So the left endpoint for this first rectangle is x equals 1. We can call that x sub 1. The left endpoint for the second rectangle is here at x equals 2. We call that x sub 2. The left endpoint for the third rectangle is x sub 3. And the left endpoint for the fourth rectangle is x sub 4. Now we don't put any value here at x equals 5 because remember we're only interested in left endpoints and x equals 5 only represents the right endpoint of the last rectangle. So we just want these left endpoints and if we look then at these left endpoints what we can say is that this point right here on the curve would just be f of x sub 1. In other words, if we wanted to find the value of that point, we would plug x sub 1 into our original function and it would give us this value right here. So that point is f of x sub 1. This point here is going to be f of x sub 2. This point will be f of x sub 3. And this point will be f of x sub 4. Now you can see that for our area formula, and this is going to be the area underneath the curve approximated using these rectangles, all we need is to take delta x, which we already found, we said delta x was equal to 1, and multiply it by the sum of all these values here, f of x1, f of x2, f of x3, and f of x4. So if we were going to plug some things into our formula, what we would say is that area is going to be equal to delta x we know is 1, multiplied by f of x sub 1. Well, x sub 1 we know is 1, so we'll just say f of 1. x sub 2 is 2, so we'll say f of 2. Then we have x sub 3, which is at 3, so we say plus f of 3. And x sub 4 is at 4, so we're going to say plus f of 4. And that's our last left endpoint. So this is going to be then the equation that approximates area underneath the curve. So now what we need to do is find the values of f of 1, f of 2, f of 3, and f of 4. And the way that we do that, remember that f of 1 is just whatever we get when we plug 1 into our original function here. So if we plug 1 in for x, we're going to get f of 1 is equal to, plugging in 1 for x, we get 1 over 1, or 1. To find f of 2, we'll say f of 2 is going to be equal to 1 over 2. To find f of 3, plugging 3 into our original function for x, we get 1 over 3, and then f of 4 is going to be 1 over 4. Now we just plug those back into our area equation, and we get area is equal to 1 multiplied by f of 1, which is 1, plus f of 2, which is 1 half, plus f of 3, which is 1 third, plus f of 4, which is 1 fourth. Now keep in mind that multiplying by 1 doesn't have any effect, so we can go ahead and just cancel that out. And now we're just looking at 1 plus 1 half plus 1 third plus 1 fourth. We need to go ahead and find a common denominator. Our common denominator is going to be 12. So this 1 is going to become 12 over 12. 1 half is going to become 6 over 12. 1 third is going to become 4 over 12 and 1 fourth is going to become 3 over 12. And so then when we add all those together, 12 plus 6 gives us 18, plus 4 gives us 22, plus 3 gives us 25. So we end up with 25 over 12 as an approximation for the area underneath this curve over the interval 1 to 5 using four rectangles and left endpoints to approximate the area.